Hi, I'm Dr. Danielle Mark Collins and I'm Clinical Director of Dermaface Skincare and Dermaface Clinics. And somebody asked me about Botox, where to inject in the forehead and the crow's feet. So it's quite specific to each patient, but I can kind of do a general guide and a few tips and tricks. I should actually be charging for this. The amount of, I've definitely done my 10,000 hours. So when it comes to Botox, obviously you've got your 11s here. So you'll have probably five units will pop in here, maybe two and a half here, two, two and a half, two. Then depending on the forehead, I tend to just do two, 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 two units, two units, two units, two units. It does depend on the forehead, but this is for me. A little sneaky is like a half a unit quite high up here and on both sides that stops atosis, which is a droopy eye. In the event that you get a droopy eye, it'll normally go after four or six weeks and there's also eye drops that your clinician can provide you with. And for the crow's feet, I actually, honestly, confession, I promise you, and I know I need my Botox done, but I did have most surgery. I don't know if you can see, about six weeks ago, I should have had the Botox done before I had the surgery. It would have actually really helped with the scar because if you actually have the area immobilized, then it can't stretch the scar and it'll heal better. But anyway, I've got, I had a great job done. So I don't want needles near me at the moment. I'm a bit queasy. So I am going to hold off getting my Botox. What I use for my crow's feet actually is my triple peptide eye cream, which has lots of oligopeptides. And I haven't had crow's feet Botox in a long time, but if I was, again, I get the patient to smile and again, five units, three units, two and a half. A little trick as you come around the corner, like maybe a half or a quarter. Um, and again, you can always benefit from a little sprinkling of Botox here for smoker lines and to prevent smokers lines. If you have a gummy smile, again, uh, two to three units here and here, but again, very, very experienced injector. Also, if you have nasolabial lines, often people, inexperienced injectors put product here and as they get further down the nasolabial, they put more product, which is crazy because it just droops everything and pulls it down. Remember everything, we want everything up, 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 up in the face. We want to restore the V-shape, the youthful V-shape. So when it comes to nasolabials, often if you can ask your injector to do a perpendicular and put in a bolus of the product in here, and also if you have that done first and they leave it three or four or five minutes, the lidocaine in the filler will actually numb the area. And then if they do bring it down here, they can taper it off. And again, it won't be as painful, it'll, it'll be better. When it comes to the cheek area, this is our malar fat pad. As we lose volume, as we age, it's better to get filler in here than into the tear trough. You can get the Tyndall effect, which is that blue hue. And again, this is very delicate area and it needs a really good injector. Um, to my mind. So there's just some little tips and guides and outlines. I don't want to give too much details because um, we'll be, you know, obviously I want to give information to both the patients to have them educated so they know what to ask for. And again, some information to clinicians, but not too much. I don't want to give away my 10,000 hours of injecting. So that's my top tip. Thank you guys.